talk about that we are we are more this is true for a lot of fellowships if let's say that president of barack obama said he was going to come to any he's going to pick a church on this island to come to everybody would be doing the best they could to get him to come to their church but see god god we do not put as much effort into getting god to appear in our fellowship we will we will dishonor god before we dishonor Governor Lingo and Lieutenant Governor Iona, because we want them to come. So God is more or less way down the road. It would be nice if God comes. See, we make like we want God to come. When in reality, we really don't want God to come. So that's why we do so many different things in our church. I'm not even on my notes. I'm going to try to stay on my notes, though. But the thing is that we need to become a God-honoring people. And the way that we can become a God-honoring people is to see God for who He is. A lot of people that made up a God in their own minds, they've read certain scriptures about God and they put them together and they created a God. And so it's not really the God of the Bible. The God that you can tell what to do is not the God of the Bible. The God that you can command what to do is not the God of the Bible. The God that needs your money is not the God of the Bible. You know, the God is the, the God that accepts everything and say, well, you know, uh, God understands my heart and he knows this and that. The God that is so lenient towards sin is not the God of the Bible. The God that does, that does, does not demand you to live a holy, separate life is not the God of the Bible. And so in America, by and large, we are serving the God that is not the Bible. And so we wonder why, uh, we wonder why um, in the church, the divorce rate in the church is the same as outside of the church, why um, we make excuses for people, <laughs> this is the stupidest thing I've heard. Uh, you know, I go pray with people. I went to go pray for this sick person. And this person didn't get healed. This person died. And so this person I was with said, well, oh, they got their best healing and they died. And then they, they died and got healed. I said, what is the sense of that? Why do we even go in the first place, you know? But, be, but we make excuses for our powerlessness. We make excuse for our inability to get God to move in our in our behalf. Yes. And the reason is because we do not honor God for who He is. You know, God is high and lifted up. There is absolutely no one like Him. There's no one you can. You know, you know, God is so cool. He stepped out of nothing onto nowhere and created everything. You know, even when it said about Jesus, Jesus said when Jesus was going to go to the cross. I'm going to try to do my notes. When Jesus was going to go to the cross. He didn't. Um, he didn't get together. The disciples said, you know, you guys got to have a prayer meeting. Everybody fast and pray. So after three days, you guys can pray that I come alive. Jesus said, no, no man lays my life down. Nobody takes my life. I lay it down. I raise myself from the dead. That is the God that we serve. You know, the God that um, that knows how much hair is on every single person's head on the planet. There's 6.9 billion people on the planet right now. That's a lot of counting going on. And that's the God that we serve. It's the God that um, painted the the night sky with stars. You don't see the stars all in one group like that. God spread the stars out so we might enjoy the stars. God made the ocean for us. God made all the fishes in the ocean. God made everything. The Bible says in Acts chapter 17 that He gives us breath and life. And so this is the God that we need to begin to honor. We need to discover the God of the Bible. He's not, and the God of the Bible is not a God that you can quickly ignore. The God of the Bible is not the God that He can say, well, the Bible says this, but uh, I don't really feel like doing that today. God understands. That's not the God of the Bible. He does not understand disobedience. And as the Bible says, for a time He waked at our disobedience, but now He demands all men everywhere to repent. And so if we go back to the God of the Bible, if we go back to worshiping the God of the Bible, then everything will begin to change from there. You know, um, we don't need more programs. We don't need another rapper to come to our church. We don't need another uh, politician or athlete to come to our church. We don't need more money. The church makes choke money. The church makes crazy amounts of money. It's retarded how much money the church makes. It's, it's insane. It's insane. Um, in fact, um, well, your average TV ministry makes between eighty and ninety million dollars a year. That's enough money. And we have, we have, you'll have one church in one city that's making eighty or ninety million dollars. You cannot get all the homeless people out of their city. There's something wrong with that. That's the devil. And the reason for that is because they're not honoring God. The reason they're not honoring God is because they do not know God. And the Bible says that they that know their God will be strong and do exploits. Let's go to Matthew 7, 21. So they don't know. Who's timing? Preach forever. I got it. Timing me? 
Matthew 7. Matthew 7, and we're going to go to John chapter 17. Matthew, you guys got those notes. And you know, you know, uh, you know, you know what you guys have to understand too. You know, if you come to a Bible study, if you if you if you go to church, if someone comes up and witnesses to you, that was God. That wasn't your own idea. See, nobody within ourselves. The Bible says there's no good thing that dwells in this flesh. We don't just wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to go to church. I'm going to go, I'm going to talk about God, Matthew 7. Unless God puts it in us, then we're not going to come to God. So it's a privilege even to be here. For all of us to be here right now is God. We have to acknowledge that it was God that put it in our heart. We didn't put it in our own hearts because we all could be doing something else. But anyway, Matthew 7, 21. He says, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my father. Watch this. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my father, which is in heaven. Okay, watch this now. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And you would think that's the will of God. And in thy name have cast out devils. You would think that's the will of God, the disciples are doing it. And in thy name done many wonderful works. You would think that's the will of God. But then, then I'll profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So the thing is to know God. And the thing is, if, according to this, if you are doing, if you are doing God's work without knowing God, it's a work of iniquity. It's working against you. See that there? They did all these things in verse 23. Then I'll profess unto you, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And so you're doing good churchly things, but you do not know God. John 17, 3. But I believe this is how everything is going to turn around. I believe that God is going to raise the people that are hungry after Him. Hungry after God. Just to be in His presence. Just to know Him. You know, you kind of wonder what was the problem of Paul and Silas and all the disciples at first. That Paul is praising the Lord in a prison. They didn't have, you know, we got luxury prisons now. You know, I don't want to go to jail. We got luxury prisons now. So Paul was chained up to a wall with his body on the side of it in the dark. You know, their bathroom was where they were. It was dark, nasty, and sick. Nobody was bringing them full food. They couldn't go to civil liberty. You didn't say, hey, man, they're not treating me right in here. But they was in that kind of prison. But they still said they praised the Lord. All the disciples except for of John all died by being martyred. Why? What caused them to give up their life? It wasn't just an idea. It wasn't for a God that could tell what to do. What caused them to stay focused even unto death? And I believe that every believer should have a box of boxes, book of martyrs. And you see what the people went through to honor God. Saw on a Sunday, you know, burnt at the stake. I think one of the better ones is when it has the, the I think it was the Chinese family. Oh, you guys when they um, threaten your, the life of your children. See, you can borrow, I'm going to kill your kids. And this one family, I think it was China or Korea, they had dug a hole and put the family in the hole, the mom and the husband and the kids. And they was telling them, you know, say, if you deny Christ, we'll, um, we'll let you out. And the father raised his hand to him. He was going to save his, his family. And his wife touched him, grabbed him and said, no, tonight we dine with the king. I'm not bowing down for nobody. Why is that? Today in America, if um, if you're going to church and they don't allow you to be on the praise team, they don't allow you to be on the worship team, they don't let you teach Sunday school, you drive the bus, you get all bent out of shape. Maybe you lose your house, you lose your car, you lose your job, all of a sudden you cannot serve the Lord. Why is that? Why is that? These people did not love their lives unto death. Why is that? Because they discovered God. They discovered the God of the Bible. You know, for so much little things, People in America backslide today. People backslide because of what somebody else did. What's up with that? You know, somebody on the other side of the world just passed away and had an affair and stole some money. I don't believe in God now. You know what is up with that? They're going to backslide off what somebody else did. Because we do not know who God is. All these little things that keep us from serving God. But if we knew who He was. If we learned to take our time to kneel before God and see the, the, the beauty.